name is Jomi Wilson. I'm very honored to be on the board of the Glendale Historical Society, and I'm delighted to welcome you here tonight. Not only is this the first event of the year of January, goodness, it's almost February, the first event of 2019, it is also the first event in our 40th anniversary year. <laughs> What a four decades it's been. There's some wonderful posters just here on your left. If you have time after the talk to take a look, our timeline, uh, it's absolutely dizzying what's been accomplished here. If you're a member, you will also get this fantastic calendar of our events in the mail. It's also online, it's also on our website. If you're not a member, for heaven's sake, join. There's a table right there. <laughs> just, you can do that tonight. There's Marsha holding up a brochure. And also at that table, if you're interested, you can also uh, sign up for Paul Ayer's sign-up sheet, and so you can get communications about his events. Very valuable sign-up. Extremely valuable sign-up sheet, yes. <laughs> and also, the table next to that table, there's some lovely people there selling raffle tickets to our wonderful annual <coughs> Doctor's House private dinner at the Doctor's House. Who's been to the Doctor's House? Oh, so you know the doctor's house. It's an absolutely marvelous Queen Anne, <laughs> East Lake, Victorian treasure. And just imagine being served, just, just you and you know, your significant other perhaps, and another couple, being served a beautiful Victorian meal in that lovely surroundings with, with costume docents waiting on your every whim. I mean, it's just a fabulous evening. So you can purchase the tickets. The drawing actually is on Sunday. So basically, this is your last chance to, to sign up. Um, so let's see. Oh, yes, and Paul's next event, which you want to know about, is um, just here at the library together with us, with the Glendale Historical Society. It's called Silent Glendale. And it's about the locations of silent films that were done here in Glendale, done by three filmmakers I think you've probably heard of. <laughs> Keaton, Chaplin, and Lloyd. So that's gonna be a fabulous evening. I know you don't wanna miss that. Um, and just a few housekeeping announcements. Uh, we're gonna have a question and answer session afterwards, so please keep your questions for that. Um, if you want to take pictures during the, the um, presentation, Paul has graciously allowed that, but just asks that you don't use a flash. And of course, he'll pose for selfies afterwards. <laughs> um, for a small price. For a small fee, a very small fee. <laughs> Um, if you park in the city structure, be sure to get your pass, your parking um, slip validated. It's downstairs at the desk. The library will still be open after this. And uh, the most important part of the housekeeping, the bathrooms, should you need one just out that door, they're downstairs, but there's an elevator as well as, as steps. So Paul Ayers is a fourth generation Southern California. He's the descendant of a Ventura County pioneer family. And after receiving a degree in history from UC Berkeley, Paul worked in the entertainment industry. He was a prop maker, a project manager, and also a stage manager. Then in his late 30s, Paul decided to go to law school. So he was working in the studios by day and going to school at night. Yeah, when you're in your 30s, you can do that sort of thing. He graduated, he passed the bar, and was sworn in on his 40th birthday. What a birthday present. As an attorney, he has specialized in diverse practice areas such as boundary disputes, sexual harassment, onboard aviation torts, public access cases, and death care torts. Death care torts, goodness. Uh, he became known in Glendale for his representation of class plaintiffs in the infamous Grandview Memorial Park litigation. Throughout his life, regardless of his occupation, Paul has had a deep and abiding interest in the history of Southern California. His primary research fields include silent movie locations, 19th century roads and trails, and of course, the Pacific Electric Railway. Please welcome to the stage, Paul Davis. Okay, so <clears throat> this show is a show about the Pacific Electric Glendale line. Um, has anybody seen this show before? Yeah, a few people saw it. Um, we take it from downtown Los Angeles, through Echo Park, Edendale, Atwater, up to Glendale, to North Glendale. And we do it, showing it at different times, and some, in certain cases, I'll show you what it looks like today. Um, I'm not a rail fan. There are people in this audience that know more about 
Pacific Electric, cars, everything else than I do. And I know sometimes I'll get it wrong. But if I get it wrong, please don't interrupt the show. <laughs> Wait until after the show's over and come and tell me I got it wrong, okay? That'd be really, and otherwise I'm going to make you come up and do the show for me. <laughs> um, there are two, let's see, what do we got? Oh, we got a little button here. Okay. Let's make this thing work. Okay, so that's the one. <laughs> there are two, two cars I'm going to be talking about by their nickname. Uh, one is the Hollywood car. This is a Hollywood car. Um, they are called Hollywood cars because that was the dominant equipment used on the Hollywood line of Pacific Electric. This picture is just past uh, Glen Oaks and Brand Boulevard. You can see the, the uh, bridge over the Vertigo Wash over there on the right. The other car is the PCC car. That's the President's Com Co Commission car. And they call them PCC cars, which is a little redundant, but that's the typical usage. Uh, President Franklin Roosevelt put together a commission to try and save the electric railway business, and this is what they came up with. Um, they were in different cars. They were very rocky, needed a real good right away, but they were used a lot in Glendale. So the story begins with this guy. Who's this guy? This guy is Leslie Brand. Everything in Glendale, it seems, begins with Mr. Brand. In 1902, Mr. Brand and his cronies put together a uh, company to build an electric railway from downtown Los Angeles to Glendale. In 1903, he started work and this is um, actually men from uh, interior Mexico, from Sonora, building uh, tracks up Brand Boulevard. Uh, both the Pacific Electric and other uh, railways like to bring in um, Mexican workers and Japanese workers. And uh, there's a lot of literature upon it. I know a PhD dissertation about it. So he sold out to Huntington's Los Angeles Center Urban Railway in 1904. Um, this is a map of what's called the old Pacific Electric. It's the Pacific Electric over here and the LA Inter Urban over here, but you can see that they had built their, their line up to go in there by then. In 1908, um, the LAIU was in, uh, integrated with the Pacific Electric, and then in 1911, the whole shebang was put together with um, the Los Angeles Pacific and became the big Pacific Electric that we think of today that was owned by the Southern Pacific Railway. Okay, so let's just, let's start the, the, tra the travel up to Glendale. Um, from 1905 to 1925, cars going to Glendale started at the 6th and Main Station of the Pacific Electric, built by Henry Huntington. Another picture of it. This is how it looks today. It's still there. And if you uh, look real closely, oops, why isn't this working? Uh oh. Something is happening. Not oh, there. No. Huh. It's frozen on me. go by it today, you'll see um, this Pacific Electric symbol. If you watch the movie um, L.A. Confidential, there's a scene where they're dangling a district attorney out the window. <laughs> that was shot at the Pacific Electric building, and if you look real close, you'll see the P.E. marquee. By the 1920s, the congestion in downtown Los Angeles had caused the Pacific Electric to try and find a different way of serving its suburban um, lines. And what they came up with was a short um, subway that was going to run from downtown Los Angeles, from Hill Street, out to uh, the Temple Beaudry uh, district. This is it being built in 1925. The, the, the building on top, the office building on top, obviously the subway was below it. And this is what it looked like when it was opened in 1925. You'll notice over here on the side is the old uh, Hill Street Station, which was built by um, Los Angeles Pacific. And you'll notice that there are a number of cars still in, in surface storage here. Another picture of it now, the, um, the Los Angeles Pacific Station has become a supermarket. Historic re reuse. This is November 1925. 
Uh, the character in front is a guy named D.W. Pontius, who was the general manager and vice president for Pacific Electric during most of the 20s. He's coming down to, with a kind of a grim look to open up the subway. <laughs> They're going to smash some champagne on the front of a Hollywood car. He says, give it a good hit. Look at all these guys in the back here. It's like Chinatown back here. <laughs> Wonder what their peccadillos were. So everybody saying this is really great. We're all gonna ride out to Glendale on this on this special. <laughs> they brought out this Dobbin out here, and uh, I think it's I, I think the horse is stuffed. Honestly, it, was, it doesn't look well. Um, but it was a big success. Look at that. These people are wanting to get on electric railways and go to San Fernando Valley, Hollywood, Glendale. Those were all, all serviced by, the, by the, um, the subway. This is obviously during the war, though. One of the things I was talking to somebody about while I was waiting was it takes something to get people out of their cars to support mass transit. And the war did that by making gas almost non-existent. Another picture during the war. These are people waiting to get on the subways to go Hollywood, San Fernando. And again, during the war, uh, women were, became motor people. This is at the end. Uh, so this is June 12, 1955. The, the, the railway, the Glendale line closed on June 19, 1955. As you can see, everybody's getting dead. <coughs> There's not going to be any more. And this is the next to the last day. This is June 17th, 1955. About ready to be done. This is what the subway looked like a little bit further in. And in the tunnel itself, two Hollywood cars passing. The subway uh, terminal building has survived to this day. There's a current picture of it. The entrance of it. Now, at the other end of the subway, at approximately the intersection of 2nd, Beverly, and uh, Glendale Boulevard, um, was where the portal of the subway was. And this is a, a photograph from the 1920s showing them digging the portal with a steam shovel. This is a little bit further along. Um, over here on the right is the substation that features prominently and actually still exists. Um, and you'll see it as it looks today. Here's Mr. Pontius again with the with his hood. <laughs> that's, that's Mr. Pontius's posse, right? <laughs> In front of a, of a, a Hollywood car on opening day, which is 11 thir uh, November 30th, 1925. <clears throat> Here he is speechifying. The, the, the there was a yard at the portal. It was called Toluca Yard um, because they couldn't store inside the the subway tunnel. They stored outside, so you would get a lot of people taking photographs um, because there were so many cars here and so much <coughs> rail fans call action um, at this location. Beautiful color shot uh, of Toluca Yard showing a PCC car to maintenance, a weight car with a uh, handmade lighting instrument for working at night. A lot of this maintenance of weight took place at night. PCC cars going in and out of the portal. Uh, shot from the top of the portal of a PCC car and uh, a guy taking a little time. It looks like he's looking at his phone, right? <laughs> I guess people yeah. did stuff like that before they got phones. I don't know. <laughs> this is the first of the shots that were taken by my uncle, Warren Ayers, on the last day of service, June 19, 1955. And that was a trip that my father, my uncle, my cousin, my sister, and myself all took. I was three years old. I don't remember a whole lot about it but I'm featured in it. So this is one of the special cars that went on that day. This is a, um, a first of the Oblivion shots. Um, if you have a library card that has two Oblivion on it from Glendale Public Library, this guy's on it. Um, I don't know who he is. He's kind of a ghost kind of guy. Um, but he's, saying, he's pointing at the car saying, you ain't gonna see that no more. <laughs> and then you have these shots. After, the, after June 1955, they took the Hollywood cars from the line and stuffed them into the uh, subway. And then in November 1955, they took them out. They built a little rampy 
and then they loaded them on trucks. Here's a truck right here. And they took them down to Terminal Island where they burned them. And then they took the scrap. It was a pretty common technique to burn the, the cars first, get all the wood out of them. And then they would take the steel that was left and, and use it for scrap. So that's the end of that poor little guy. This is 1960s. Um, they're, they're, they're closing up the, the portal. This is what it looked like in the 60s. Gradually, the area just became kind of a, a, a place where young gang people, young people hung out. And it became graffiti. I call this graffiti apocalypse. It became graffiti everywhere. And if you know the movie Colors with Robert Duvall and um, Sean Penn, I think is the other person in it, um, this, was, this, this, this area featured prominently in certain of the scenes. In 2004, um, it was decided that there was going to be a condominium um, project built here. And so rail fans came to pay their last respects. And this is the rail fans wandering around the ruins of Toluca Yard to <laughs> say goodbye. This is the first um, floor of the, of the condominium going in. And that's what it looks like after the condominium and then they painted out all the graffiti on the substation. And that's what it looks like today. Wow. Now, the thing is though, you can't go there because it's a private little park for all the condominium guys. But you can go up on the, on the, the public service that's right next to it and take pictures uh, like I did. Um, and then on the portal, they painted a Hollywood car. Yeah, so I guess that's kind of the, like to bring the other Hollywood cars in so they can shoot them, I don't know. I'm some sort of decoy, I'm not sure what that's about. Okay, so we're gonna move up the line now. This is a, a shot from the Beverly Viaduct um, looking down into Luca Yard. This is 1941, kind of the height of, of action there if you, want, if you want. This is the same view today. Um, I guess they couldn't figure Toluca Station as, a, as some marketing person told them that Toluca Station wasn't a good idea, so they called it Belmont Station. One of the interesting things is, if you notice these, lands, uh, these light standards, it looks like it's the same light standards that have made it all the way through to today. <coughs> this is looking north from the viaduct to Sewing Glendale Boulevard. You see some uh, Hollywood cars in the distance. It's, one of the things I look at is, is how much the scale of the area has remained the same. This little area has seen pretty much the same. Many of the residential and commercial buildings look the same. This is how it looks today. Much of the commercial buildings are, are, are the same. There's, that house is in the previous, uh, previous shot. Moving up Glendale Boulevard, you crossed into uh, Cross Temple and into Echo Park. Uh, this is Echo, or Glendale Boulevard and, and Bellevue, which is right behind here is um, Echo Park Lake. This is 1942. Uh, a number of the PCC cars will be painted to promote different armed forces. This promotes the waves. There's public stairs um, across the street from the lake where people would watch cars go by, see all kinds of cars. There's um, uh, the Foursquare Tabernacle uh, and Echo Park. And then this is what it looks like today. Pretty much the same. I mean, there's not a lot of change in terms of scale. This is a beautiful shot. This is a 1954 shot. Um, here are the lilies, uh, water lilies that uh, grow it, um, and they have the, the Lotus Festival um, at, at uh, uh, Echo Park. That's a Hollywood car. Virtually everything in this photograph is the same, except there's no trolleys anymore. Looking across towards Echo Park Lake, um, a group of nines. This probably is during the war because they brought back these old, this old equipment for the war to handle the crowds. It's a three-car train. Um, they had names like the city of Glendale, city of Burbank. Uh, this may be one of the city cars or the city trains. Anytime you have more than one car, it's a train. Little thing that you didn't know. Oh, also, the, I didn't mention this before. Sometimes I'll say inbound, outbound. What that means is for the Glendale line is you're outbound when you're leaving LA and going to Glendale. You're inbound when you're leaving Glendale and going to, to LA. So this car is outbound. 
At Park Avenue, which is right in front of the, the Angeles Temple, all the cars, except the Glendale line cars, separated and went up to Sunset Boulevard. That would be the San Fernando Valley line, the Hollywood line, and the Santa Monica via uh, Beverly Hills line. And then the Glendale line went on to Glendale. <coughs> this is 1928. So you see the, uh, the, the lines curving off to go up to Sunset. Here's Angela's Temple, but there's Amy. And Amy says, welcome home. That's what the sign actually says, says welcome home. Right there, see, there's Amy. She hasn't disappeared with the choir director yet. Um, yeah, well, she was kidnapped, right? <clears throat> and uh, the interesting thing about this shot is they haven't put in the concrete viaduct over Sunset in it yet. It's still a, a, a steel uh, bridge. This way it looks today. Um, you know, it's changed. The, the temple's still the same, uh, but it's changed some. But, you know, basically the, the, streetscape, the streetscape looks the same. This is looking down from the Sunset Viaduct. Um, a three-car train of outbound uh, PCC cars, the temple over here, and here you can buy a malt for 10 cents. <coughs> That's pretty good. Hamburgers. That's the way it looks today. Once you got past the viaduct, you got to the Montana Street stop, and a lot of cars waited for trainers. <coughs> you, people don't understand how trains work. Trains don't move whenever the guy who's driving them says they're going to move. He has to have orders to move them. They're called train orders. So there would be big trains, five car trains, waiting for their train orders here. So a lot, there were a lot of photographs taken. This, this photograph was taken in 1936. Again, most of the, the background has remained the same. Another shot from the same day. Notice the, the steel uh, um, guard rail on the public stairs and the um, buildings in the back. I like this kid. I don't know. I always wonder, where is he running? What is he doing? What did he steal? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. And then this guy's got a, a boulder. I like that too. This is the view today again. The, the steel, the steel um, part of the public stairs still. All these are the same buildings. Uh, two car train of Hollywood cars uh, looking the other way from Montana. Another color one of the 1955 Chevy truck and a bus. This is the way it looks today. When you get closer to the viaduct, there's Dick Clark. I guess he's he's still not with us. But this is a little piece of, of trolley uh, artifact uh, archaeology. You go around like downtown LA, even over on Glendale on the Glendale Hotel, you'll see these little rings. And what they were were to support trolley wires, trolley lines. So you'll, you'll, they, they built them into um, certain structures. Uh, the Hollywood Freeway uh, going up to the valley, you'll see them there too. This is the Epi stop. Um, this is a special. Uh, Pacific Electric would you know, run band trips, all kinds of trips, as special trips. And they put these really nice cars together to do it. This is a very old picture. This is 1906. This is looking down um, at Glendale Boulevard. The Max Senate Studio isn't even there yet. It's going to be right here. But, and here you see what I'm pretty sure, coming from a farm family, are bags of beans. And beans were a big, big deal um, for farmers in Los Angeles during that time. This is the same view today. I mean, the scale hasn't changed. That's the, the old Max Senate studio right there. Storage. Fargo, um, this is the Fargo stop. Um, high school kids waiting for, waiting for the, the PCC to take them into LA. This is approximately where the Glendale Freeway leaves Glendale Boulevard now. This is the Alessandro cut, a big cut that was made to get through to Ivanhoe, and the Ivanhoe Hills, and Edendale. PCC car in the car. This is one of the most beautiful pictures ever. This is, uh, this is from the Huntington. And this is, this is coming up 
making a curve, and these were called the Ivanhoe Hills, back, you know, when they were hills and not just some kind of community in Los Angeles. Glendale's right out here. <coughs> and um, Verdugo Wash comes in right here. What's the bottom of the screen? Yeah, I keep it till the end. Um, this is what it looks like in the 1930s. So we've had Edendale's grown up a bit. This curve right here is Whitmore. It's the first stop inside of Edendale. This is what it looks like today. Now if you go back to here, and you see this cut right here, there it is right there. And that's where the line turned and started going straight for a while through, through, through Ivanhoe. Oh, why is that sideways? Oh, that's very strange. Okay, well it is, oh, I see. Okay, so that's Whitmore. And Edendale actually had its own little line, so there was a third rail, or a third rail uh, trackage that came in and uh, for just the Edendale cars. This is uh, the second of the photographs taken by my uncle Lauren Ayers. This is at Whitmore. Uh, you can see the, the market next to it, right there. And there I am. <coughs> That's me. There's my dad. And there's my sister, Veronica. And why he dragged us on, I don't know. But my dad would drag me to a lot of things. He used to take me out of the school to go see train wreck, and that's true. That's a true story. <laughs> There's a train wreck in Bakersfield, Paul. Let's go. <laughs> Another shot of Whitmore after the, the third track has been pulled out. Now, this is the right of way past Whitmore. Um, it's still undeveloped. Here's a, a three-car train inside that, that little cut. Same cut today. This is a lake, sh lake view. It's lake something, I'm sorry. You know, sometimes I can't remember, I can't pull it together. Um, this is 1915. Um, PE did a series of safety video, or videos, safety film. And they did one of them here, showing a guy having a, a train or a, a car knock him over. <coughs> Further along, we're about to get, we're getting closer to India Street Station. I love that name, India Street Station. There's the same cut today near India. Now this is the third uh, photograph taken by my Uncle Lauren. That's my cousin Alan there with the box camera. Didn't get that box camera film. No sir, I don't know where that one went. I'd love to get that film. Um, this guy, I don't know what the heck. Uh, you know, he's, just, he's, he's, he's got too much energy. He's too excited, right? There's my father right there and my sister. Now up until this Sunday, I had never seen this photograph. This was taken by a guy named Bill White, who I guess was riding in the car with me. Um, it's on the Pacific Electric uh, Railway Historical Society's uh, webpage, and you should check it out because there's a lot. If you like Pacific Electric, they've got great, great stuff. But I'd never seen this one before. I ran across it. That's my sister Veronica walking across. Everybody else is running back toward the car. It's like, let's get going, let's get going. But for some reason, she's not. I'm not sure why. But she's not around to tell us today, so we'll have to figure that one out. Another shot at India Street. Nice little color shot of a two-car train. This is what India Street looks like today. The grade has been changed substantially. When they put in the Glendale Freeway, they, they took a lot of dirt out of the, the right-of-way because nobody, nobody wanted it and it reverted to the state. And so they felt it was okay for them to do it. So this is the, the grade's about 20 feet lower than it was when the Pacific Electric was there. This is another shot by Bill White. I hadn't seen this one uh, until 2015. That's my dad, hanging out like he would, looking, looking to get forward. This is also taken by my, um, my uncle Lauren. My dad is still hanging out. <laughs> this is the uh, Fletcher Street Viaduct, uh, one of the big, um, construction sites on the Glendale line. Um, this is in 1904 when Leslie Brand's uh, crews were still working it. And when they built it, this is 1914, when they built it they didn't leave a hole for people to drive through because there wasn't any Fletcher Drive. So 
Then Fletcher Drive came along and, and Pacific Electric decided they better put up a, a hole, so they, they brought in a couple of big hooks. Those are called big hooks, these things right here, and um, dropped a, a, a viaduct in there. And that's what it looked like. This particular photograph graced a number of Pacific Electric publications because it's so gosh darn beautiful and it features the native tree of California, the eucalyptus. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, so that's a famous the color picture of the viaduct. A three-car train just past the viaduct. And then this, this one I just put on a couple of days ago. This is um, 1942, uh, taken from Riverside Drive. But I love Curry's. I went to Curry's when I was a kid. And then you remember, you remember they always had these big ice cream cones. That's so good. In 1959, reverse the process. So they just cut that bridge away with torches and dropped it out. Once past the viaduct, you came to Fletcher Drive's stop. And there was a large public uh, stairway to come up to, to get the trains. You notice there's a Chevron here and a Richfield over here, and they're still there. There's the Richfield, there's the Chevron, and this is where the stop was. The post, uh, the dragon teeth, whatever you want to call them, for the, the viaduct is still there, and people decide to make art of it. I don't know what the stop sign means, come on, who knows what that is. Stop Trump, I don't know. <laughs> and then this is looking back at the public, the public stairs going up to the Fletcher Drive stop. There's this thing called the Big Parade where people go around um, Hollywood, Los Angeles, going up and down public stairs. This is the 2010 Big Parade going up those stairs. This is a very old shot. This is probably within one or two years after the line opened, 1906, 1907. This is what would become Riverside Drive. Um, this is the LA River over here. This is a, something I love a lot because it turns up in my silent movie show as well. It's called Beacon Hill. It's called Beacon Hill because uh, when the airport, the Glendale Central Airport was operating, there was a beacon on top. And there's still little remnants of it if you go up there. But um, I have yet to find a photograph of it. I've never found a photograph of it. That's called Beacon Hill. And then the train coming, coming through here. Now before it got to the river, so that's another picture of it. This is the viaduct over Riverside, and then the train going, or the, the trestle going over um, to Atwater for the Pacific Electric, and what would be the Hyperion Drive bridge over there. And here's the river in its nice, calm, gentle state that didn't last. This is Monte Sano, which is the last stop before you cross the river. It was named after. Um, a hospital that was essentially where the photo photographer is standing, looking down. PCC car going up, about to go across, or coming, yeah, he's inbound, so he's going back to LA. And then this is an express car, here with a couple of box cars. So that was, there was some kind of uh, big movement going on there. And behind it is, is the Hyperion Bridge that was built, started in 1927 and finished in 1929. Another picture, now the siding is gone. So this is about the early 50s. Look at all these nice pretty trucks. Aren't they pretty? Beautiful shot of a couple of PCC cars, a PCC train about to go across the Riverside Drive viaduct. Notice the sign, Monte Sano. Okay, so 59, first we build the trail, then we deconstruct the trail. I mean, it's just like we're gonna tear it right down. So they just come in and they're tearing down the viaduct over Riverside Drive. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Now in 1987, I was living in Echo Park. Uh, that's my little red Ford Ranger. Um, and I noticed that they were about to take out the abutments um, for the viaduct across Riverside Drive that had been sitting there forever. Nice little piece of uh, ruins like on the banks of the Nile in Egypt. So I decided I better take pictures of them. So I took pictures of it. Four stairways to no place. Yeah. So now it's gone and there's, there's a parking lot there, but there is one little artifact left, and that's where the center pylon on the viaduct used to go. So if you drive on Riverside Drive, you know, stay up there as you go by for a poor little train. 
Okay, back to going across the river. So they built um, the trestle across the river like LA River was a dry wash, right? Well, it's a dry wash a lot of the time, but sometimes it's not. And what, and here's another picture. That's a nice picture. That's Glen Hill over there, and a little bit closer. But what happens is when you build all those pilings close together, they become a dam. And when, they, and when the big rains come and the big things come, it goes away, the, tr the trestle goes away. And this is 1914, which was a huge rain year in, in California. A lot of trestles went away in 1914. Oh, no. And yeah, and, and so what did they do? They built it back the same way, <laughs> right? So this is 1927, right? So the Hyperion, the, the new Hyperion Bridge hasn't been built. So that's the Hyperion Drive Bridge as it is. And the Pacific Electric, and the guys with the umbrellas are going, well, I'll bet you, <laughs> and, there's, and the water's coming. But this time it wasn't the Pacific Electric Bridge, it was the Hyperion Drive Bridge. So after that, everybody got smart and figured, let's put in concrete piers. And so that's what they did. And here's a nice overall shot. Here's the Hyperion Bridge. Here's the, the um, Pacific Electric Bridge. And a nice little postcard of it. This is, a, I like this picture because um, this is a 900, so it's probably, uh, it's, I don't know, it's probably 50, 40s, late 40s. But somebody's taking a picture as the guy hits the bridge, and the motor man's going, what the? And this guy, though, he thinks it's really funny. <laughs> but he's like, what are you doing? This is a beautiful shot. This is the city of Burbank. I think it's, the, it's like the last run of the city of Burbank. With, uh, so this, this, this train would go all the way from the subway terminal all the way to Burbank without, you know, with minimal stops. It was like an express. Now, notice that all the, the poles, the trolley, the, the trolley poles, or the trolley poles, the, the you know, what are they the, they're not telephone poles, the poles, um, are sitting on these little concrete abutments, right? So you look at it now, they're still there. Right. So, and you get to this side, and so he's decided this is the red car at River Park, which I don't know what it means. I don't see any red cars, but I guess they thought it was nice to draw a picture of a Hollywood car there. Once you got past the bridge, you went in this nice little cripple um, uh, viaduct and trestle. A couple of uh, PCC cars, there's the Hyperion Bridge behind. This is what it looked like crossing over um, Hyperion. It's interesting that this little area right here, if you go here and you drive through this, all the traffic pattern is controlled by the fact um, that there was a mode of transportation that went through there that no longer exists. So when you drive through here, you go around the corner, it doesn't, it, it, for no other reason than there used to be the PCC viaduct right here. Nice picture from the 55, and then that's how it looks today. This commercial building survives, but see, you're still making that turn to go around because there was a PCC viaduct there. Once you're in Atwater, um, you get uh, to the, this is Glenhurst, it's the first stop in Atwater, little two-car train. This is Atwater proper. Oopsie, got to get ahead of myself. Oops, I'm going the wrong direction. Where is going? Okay, now we're back. And, um, it basically looks the same, not much change. A little bit further on the line, you can see Sealy's right here, okay? You can see this is the Rio Grande uh, gas station. Sealy's is still there, and the gas station's become a taco stand. Now you're approaching what was called Richardson. Richardson was where the Pacific Electric crossed the Southern Pacific. And you can see where the, the warning arms are here. And this is the control tower. And so that way they would, they, the control guys would keep the trains, hopefully, from hitting each other. The Pacific Electric from hitting, this is 1927. Another shot from basically the same, same view from 1955. There's the tower there. And then an oblivion shot from 1955. And there's the Richardson Tower again. This was taken by my Uncle Warren. I'm not sure what these, what's going on here, 
Um, I think they were going on the old special uh, part of the transfer between the Pacific Electric and the Southern Pacific Station in Glendale. I'm not sure, but they're up to no good because right after this, they stop on the Southern Pacific Main Line. <laughs> this, this is so wrong. I mean, I, I, can't, I can't tell you how wrong this is. Uh, and, and I think they kind of figured it out because they're all running for their lives back to the car to get it off the main line. But uh, boy, I scratch my head at that one. A little bit further on here, Sealy. Same view pretty much today. They're Sealy now. But basically, I'll put this, this photograph in to show you how, what is left on Brennan Boulevard because now we're moving into Glendale proper and Glendale Boulevard is about to become Brand Boulevard, is these poles. These poles were erected by the Pacific Electric to service their lines, and they have survived to this day. They're basically the same except for the light, the light stanchion. Other than that, they, it's basically the same, the same uh, setup. Okay, so we're back to the guys. Um, oldest, the oldest uh, photograph I have uh, on Brand Boulevard jumping forward to 1956, when they're taking out the rails. And this guy, I don't think he's working on this crew. Uh, I could be wrong. No, I think he's the city manager of Glendale. Behind him is um, the Maple intersection. Or not Maple, I think it's Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase. That's, that's how it looks today. I love this picture. I mean, I just love it. It's it's got everything. It's got white wall tire. It's, it's got Paulette Godard. That tells you exactly when this was shot. It's 1949. Um, it's got two PCC car train. Um, it's just it's just gorgeous. It's a gorgeous shot. And not only that, but the Vogue Theater still exists. It just doesn't look like the Vogue Theater anymore. <laughs> it's Nissan of Glendale. So if you go someplace in there, is the tickets. To some place in there is the projection booth. But I just love that it's still around. Okay, so now we're up to Lamita. Lamita had these beautiful palm, um, palm, had these beautiful eucalyptus trees on it, and I don't know why they're there, but they they led to a lot of photography. This is a shot in 1905, looking west uh, towards Lamita, about where the Catholic Church is now. Um, this is 1904, um, waiting for the, for the train. This is about 10 years later. Most of these houses still exist in place. You just can't see them because there's stuff in front of them, but they exist. Nice little uh, waiting room. That's how it looks today. Oh my gosh, yeah. But if you go on here and you take the, a photograph, you can find the, the houses. That are still, some of them are still around. Now this is what I remember, okay? A lot of people in this building or room, I'm sure, remember this. It is going up Brand Boulevard and with the Masonic uh, Hall on the, on the right and seeing these Christmas decorations. People ask me what I remember about my three-year-old journey in the PCC car through Glendale. What I remember is this view going up Brand and how rocky that PCC car was. It was like being in a, in a like one of those things in front of a, a, a grocery store with little horses. It just was like that. They were notorious. They needed. They were notoriously rocky if they didn't have a good right of way. And uh, Metropolitan Coach bought the passenger line service in '53 and just stopped doing maintenance on the on the right of ways. And so by '55, it was it was really really rocky. And uh, it was just one of the failings of the, of, of the breed. That's what the Masonic Temple used to have on its side. Welcome to Glendale and have a Coke. The same view today. This is from the 1930s. Notice that, that the Masonic Temple had its own uh, um, movie theater. Um, when I was, I mean, even in the last, I don't know, some 80s, there were a lot of movie theaters in Glendale. And I went to the Glendale, I remember watching uh, uh, a lot of bad movies um, at the Glendale Theater for really cheap. This is 1925 at Harvard Street. Um, 
the poles stayed in the middle of the street for many, many years, uh, for until the 1930s. This is looking back south to Harvard Street. There's the Glendale Union High School right there, which is also going to be in the silent movie uh, show because Buster Keaton shot a whole lot of college on the steps of the Union High School. Um, he's got something here. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, it's bundles. It's dope. I don't know what it is. You know, it's 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 Bolivian marching powder. I I can't tell. Lovely picture of a PC outbound PCC car um, going crossing Harvard. Uh, there's the Glendale Theater right there. Love that theater. Hey, I cried when it went. Um, the brand new um, uh, banquet hall still is still here, and the Security Pacific. When um, Los Angeles Inter Urban brought the car, uh, brought the, the electric line to, to Glendale in 1904, they built this lovely little station. And it lasted from 1904 to 1923. Here's another, a few pictures of it. Well, live in it, don't you? Yeah. I do. Little train there. And at that time, Broadway was called 4th Street. So on the old maps that says 4th Street, that, that car there, I think, is going to go out on Broadway. I'm not covering the Broadway line on this talk, nor am I covering Burbank. I have in the past, but boy, that's a long show. <laughs> so we're going to cut those today. This is the first train by the, uh, once LAIU had been absorbed into Pacific Electric, there's the Union High School again. And actually, we're, we're basically sitting in the Union High School site. That's what was right here. Um, okay, this is looking north in 1925. Now the Security Pacific Building has been built. And that is kind of the constant in this part of Glendale. The Pacific Electric changed a lot of things. It took the center of town from Glendale, at Glendale Boulevard and Broadway and brought it west to Brand. The reason that the City Hall and um, the other government buildings, the, city, the courthouse are over there is because that was, the city, that was the center of the town. And that was where the first uh, train went, was up Glendale Boulevard. But Leslie Brand changed all that. That's how it looks today. So this is 25. So the thing that's left is the Security Pacific, except they took all this stuff off because it would fall and kill you during an earthquake. And the other thing that you notice is there's nothing above Lexington in most of these pictures. And all of a sudden there is this. The children of the 90s. This is a view from a commercial building on the west side of Brand, 1920s. A view from the top of the Security Pacific Building, 1920s, looking south. Here's Lamita. As you can tell, you can tell though, you can see those those trees. You can always tell where they are, where you are. Looking north towards the mountains. Now, I like this picture. This is turning off the Broadway line in front of the Security Pacific. But there's a chair. <laughs> now, think about that, huh? Isn't that nice? There's a chair. I don't know. I mean, you know, why don't we do that now, right? It's a lovely picture. Isn't that a great picture? This is looking from the, the, the northwest corner of Broadway and Brand across the Security Pacific. Look at the, the boys are selling papers to people getting off the streetcars. Imagine that. Huh? Imagine that. Another picture looking north at Brand and Broadway. Everything's gone over here. It's all gone. Yeah! It's gone, man. <laughs> Glendale reinvents itself, right? This is looking kind of the other way. This is looking at Security Pacific. This is 1950. This is June 1955. You see the Alex Spire there. Uh, some of it's still, you know, some of it's still around. You know, the, it, it's funny. You go block by block, and and sometimes it's like you know, it just it's, it died, and they took it off to the cemetery, and sometimes it's, it lasts. It was taken by my uncle Warren Harris. He, um, 
This is a car I was in. I'm not sure where I am. I don't see myself. There's a sailor over there waiting for something. I'm not sure what. This is, uh, I don't know if you guys remember this, but Dr. Stewart, the friendly critic dentist, go in there and he give you the gas and do it for cheap. <laughs> uh, this is the last day of service. This is June 19th, 1955. Nice Cadillac over here. Um, and this group of people is kind of getting an impromptu farewell ceremony for the, the Glendale one. And they're standing around saying, what do we do now? Let's have a cigarette. Which is, I think, more what people did then. Now, this guy is George Wickham. He was the mayor of Glendale. Why is this man smiling? The removal of the red car line, the, the Glendale line, devastated Brent Boulevard. It was, people came to Glendale to go shopping. They came on the red cars. Once the red cars were gone, everybody flailed around, and you started to see the decline of Brent Boulevard that continues to today. Unless you're Mr. Caruso, who can turn things into gold. And here we go, the grip and grin. The motorman looks bemused. He's saying, who is this guy? <laughs> Why is this guy shaking my hand? I don't know. You know? Moving up from uh, Broadway and, and Brand, this is looking south of the 1920s. Back at Dr. Stewart's friendly desk. Now, I believe that underneath the present um, uh, building, that you'll still find that curve. Whenever you see a curve building, this is another thing about trolley archaeology, you see a curve building, it often means that there was a trolley line there because trolleys don't turn right and left. They don't make 90 degree turns, they have to have curves. So this curve front was because there was a trolley line there. Now we're at uh, Wilson. Um, this, some of this is, is, is stayed. There's the spire of the Alex. Another shot from Wilson. The, the um, name board, the, the title board from the Alex is over there. This block is in pretty good shape. Most of it's still there. That's how it looks today. This is a little bit for this between California and Lexington. Notice that this is like, they, they're not in the street yet. They still have raised um, uh, trackage. Uh, there's a Glendale News Press here. You can just see the thing here, the old Lexington Hotel. And um, there was a movie theater here. I never figured out what this guy's doing. Um, he's looking for snakes. I don't know. He's, he's, I don't know what he's doing, but he's measuring something. But here's the News Press over here again in the Lexington Hotel. This is at Lexington stop, nice little people going to get on and go down to, to LA. Now I included this one. Uh, this is a uh, postcard. I think it's, it was put out to uh, publicize Glen Fed, the Glen Fed building. Um, but I included it because it shows how late the trolley poles lasted. This is from 1960s. Um, one thing I like about this is they've airbrushed out the Hollywood Hills. So it looks like you're about to go into Nebraska. <laughs> this is the 1984, the Olympics, again, till late, this, this, the, the trolley poles lasted. This is around Duran, what is now Duran, Duran it did not exist at this time, looking towards North, uh, North Glendale. Again, moving closer to the Verdugo Wash, 1940. This is at the Verdugo Wash in 1941. Um, the, the Grand Boulevard went here, and the trolley went between them. This is the beginning of what's called Arden Junction. At Arden Junction, the trains to Burbanks started heading west on Glen Oaks, um, and the trains for North Glendale kept going up Brand. They're putting in striping, uh, no, a stop sign there, I think. This is a picture of a PCC car going across Verdugo Wash, 1955. This is a 1982 photograph. I just included this because it shows how late this infrastructure lasted. So the, the, PC, the, um, the Pacific Electric cars went right in here. And if you look real close, like you can't look real close with this image, but there are, you could, the buttons were still there when this photograph was taken. 
Um, and it was these nice steel bridges that we still have to the north of here on the Verdugo Wash. This is our junction behind uh, the PCC car is the Church of the Incarnation. These rails are going off the Burbank. These rails are going to go up North Broadway. This is how it looks today. The Catholics are still in business, and uh, things are good. All right, so this is at Dryden. Um, the thing about North, Bra uh, North Glendale is it pretty much looks the same. Um, the, the, the whole scale of, of the area has remained pretty much the same, although now they're putting a, a big old hotel right here. Um, but if you want to get a sense of what it felt like, um, the, North Glendale is the best place to go. As I said, now this is how it looks today. The palm trees are the same. We got this low rise right here, but other than that, um, it's pretty much it's pretty much looks like the same the same place. There's a two car train, and this is a little comparison shot. So, see the apartment building here, apartment building here. The only thing really different is the Monterey apartments here. <coughs> this is Blitz. <laughs> now. <laughs> Uh, I was talking to Sean um, before the show. We, I put up this picture on my Facebook feed. I do uh, a post a day of historical material on my, my personal page. And I put up this picture two or three days ago. And I said in it, I said, you know, this isn't about somebody's mental state. This is about, this was the Bliss Ranch. And immediately people say, well, that must have been Guy Bliss. And I know Guy Bliss, or he built my house in Pasadena. I said, no. And, just, it, and finally, Sean put up a picture of the ranch, and that kind of shut him up. <laughs> um, the Bliss Ranch had an old busted down uh, uh, adobe on it. And the Pacific, the, actually, it was the, the LAIU, followed by the Pacific Electric, wanting to bring people to, to Glendale to sell real estate and also to make them, to have them use the, the, the line. And as you know, much of what the Pacific Electric and any inter urban railway was about was selling real estate. That's where it was really at, you know, because that's where the money was. So they build these lines out and sell people plots. So they put they, they took this old ruin and they turned it into a restaurant called Casa Verdugo. And here's a picture of the Casa Verdugo. Um, and they bring people up there and give them a big meal and then sell them real estate. Good thing to do, you know, make a lot of money. North Glendale was a, a major, you know, place where, where things were laid over, and so people took a lot of pictures here. It was a bathroom, so the motormen have to pee. So that's that's that was their bathroom there. At that time, Mountain didn't come through to Brand, and and Brand did not go up to Kennett. We just stopped there. Another shot of a, a PCC car. This is a special, you know, uh, excursion. This is, 1299 was the kind of the, the boss's car, and it was gorgeous. And when you saw that, if, you, if it wasn't special, then you knew you were, you were getting visited by the big guy, and you better be together. And here's a PCC and an old double bigger uh, bus. Another PCC, now Mountain Street has gone through, and now, uh, Brian has gone through to Kenneth. That's how it looks today. Now, the bathroom has gone underground, it's subterranean. Uh, I can remember when you could actually go down and pick the lock. <laughs> but you can't, they put it aside that they didn't want me doing that anymore, so they put a steel plate over it so you can't get down there, which I guess the bus guys, I don't know what they do. They just, deal with it however they deal with it. A shot at 501, beautiful picture at uh, North Glendale. Another shot of it. Step aboard. This is the last shot in my Laura, my Uncle Lauren's shot. He has the, the 5160 and 5010 and a bus. Mm -hmm. you know, what are you going to do? And somebody's left their water running. Boy, they're going to get a note from TWP. <laughs> and this apartment building still exists. 
And then you look back, and one of the things about Grand Boulevard is north and south. And you look back, you can see the library tower. And you think about all the things that used to be, and then it's the end. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Paul. I'm going to try to take a, put a nice picture here. I'll just put this one up. Great. Uh, that's a good one. <laughs> put that one up. Anybody got any questions?